New Year. All right, I'm Eva Stoops with Chesapeake Environmental Lab, and I am your outgoing chair. And I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to Mike and Helen Katinas, for the owners of Annie's, for hosting, and also Queen Anne's County Public Schools for sponsoring the breakfast. Can we give them a round of applause? Okay, um, really quick, Linda, do not freak out. I'm going off script. <laughs> okay, I want to take this opportunity to thank Linda and Tracy at the Chamber Office for all they do. They are truly the backbone of this organization, and they have the amazing ability to make the chair look and sound like we know what we're doing. We are both, they're both excellent at their job, and this chamber is so deserving to have you. You guys are dedicated, and you do a fabulous job. I know, this is really bothering me. Hold on, I have a little something for you guys. Tracy! <laughs> Tracy saw a gift and was like, here I come! <laughs> Thank you very, very much. You guys keep stopping. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's um, move along here. Elected officials, I'd like to say thank you for being here this morning. We have Commissioner Jack Wilson. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Camille Demino. service on the board of chamber. It was Suzanne Lashinsky with Anne Arundel Medical Center. Is she here? No. And we have Casey Palmer with Palmer's Plumbing. They have stepped off. They have done their service and we thank them very, very much. At this time, I would like to introduce our 2019 chairman, Bill Cockey with Edward Jones. He's a financial advisor here on Ken Island. Thank you. Stand on up. Come on up. Uh, with great pleasure, I, I get to present, and uh, well, first, thank you very much for your service and uh, dedication to the Chamber of Commerce in 2018, and uh, leading by example. So, uh, we'd like to present with you, present to you this plaque, uh, and just says in appreciation for your dedication and commitment in, at, as the 2018 Queen County Chamber of Commerce Chair. Thank you. Okay, so Linda's asked me to make a few opening comments and then uh, I'll introduce our, our Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and the Executive Board. Uh, so I'll start with just a real short story on my experience with the Chamber of Commerce. I personally joined our Chamber of Commerce in 2011. Uh, my wife and I had recently re relocated to Penn Island uh, after a recruiter for Edward Jones asked me, where do you want to live the next 30 to 40 years of your life? Uh, so, I was building a financial services business from scratch not long after the financial crisis of 2008 in an area where I was not from, uh, and where I knew only two people well, my mother and my father. <laughs> so I turned to Queen Anne's County Chamber of Commerce. Linda Friday, president, greeted me with open arms, quite literally, uh, and I asked her how to become a member before I knew really what the Chamber of Commerce did locally. Um, uh, and then, you know, almost eight years late, later now, I'm very grateful for the opportunity uh, to serve as the chairman of the board. Um, and uh, a few uh, few comments on, uh, on on business locally. 
In a time of social media, online shopping with free two-day shipping, groceries delivered to your front door, and online bill pay, we don't have to leave the comfort of our home or office very often. We're living in a time of extraordinary convenience. Convenience is not a good way to build, maintain, or grow relationships or business. We need to meet people face to face, shake a hand to build, uh, and, and shake a hand to build relationships. That's where trust is built. Uh, that's where business is built and grown. Uh, that's where the Chamber of Commerce comes in to facilitate the introductions of business people at our regular monthly events. Um, we have some fantastic and extraordinarily successful and innovative business people in our community that you may not know exist because they don't have a storefront. Um, let's see. Um, Linda Friday, Tracy Wilson, and the Board of the Chambers strive to actively connect people and organizations in our county. Um, our workforce development efforts will continue and accelerate in 2019. Um, and uh, let's, let's see. Uh, introducing our educators at the high school and college level to the needs of the business community and facilitating the necessary face-to-face -face communication and accountability. So, all right. Uh, uh, without further ado, I'll introduce our board of directors. Um, and if you would please stand. Uh, Tammy Rosendale, Rosendale Realty. <laughs> Kathy Kendall, Queenstown Bank. Mark Lacoste, Best Western. <laughs> Kelly Keating, Anne Arundel Medical Center. <laughs> Robert Woolley, The Edge Training Academy. <laughs> Brian Eber, The Atlantic Title Group. <laughs> and on the board and executive board, Ava Stoops, past chair, Chesapeake on the Environmental Lab. <laughs> Ralph Twilley, treasurer, Short United Bank. <laughs> Art Crowfoot, secretary, APG Media. <laughs> and Susan Vienna, our vice chair and Fishergate Graphic. Fishergate Graphic. <laughs> It is with great pleasure I have the honor to introduce Linda Friday, President of the Queens County Chamber of Commerce. Good morning. Bill didn't share that uh, he actually just became a new dad uh, over the last uh, 10 days, so congratulations, Bill. He's actually not a new dad, it's his second child, but congratulations. Uh, we know all the hard work. And I was a little nervous when uh, he's decided to step up to be chair because I knew that uh, his wife and, and he were expecting, but it all worked out. So congratulations. The baby came just in time. So thank you. <laughs> I was hoping it would come on my birthday, but it didn't happen, and I shared that with him. Uh, first, I'd like to thank you for coming today. Uh, very excited to have uh, the group that's here. We've got lots of our, our partners that are here this morning, and we couldn't do it without you um, as a member or as a partner. Uh, we have really um, moved forward uh, with the CTE workforce development initiatives the Chamber's been involved in. In fact, I'm pleased to say that not only is the Chamber involved, but in many cases we have been the driver of what has happened over the past year. Um, among many things, this past year we arranged five tours, and I know that um, our speakers are going to talk more about the tours that we did this year. Uh, some of the tours that we, that we, or some of the people that we took on the tours were our educators, that was the, the uh, counselors and uh, our work-based learning teachers, um, and then we had our students, we actually took students into the business community. Uh, we have our government officials, so it's nice to have so many people represented here today. Um, and then we uh, were asked to do our frontline people. Uh, which are people that are in some of our government services that actually work with the community. So we um, took them on some tours and some of the people that are in this room were uh, lucky enough to be, uh, get our host for those tours, so thank you for that. Um, I'm extremely proud of the Chamber uh, leadership and initiatives result resulting in me uh, joining 
for the first time, actually we were the only chamber to be uh, asked to sit at the table with the MSDE uh, CTE task force. So um, I got to speak on behalf of you uh, as a chamber, uh, and I, I was one out of 64 that could be chosen. So I was chosen to sit on that because of what we've been able to accomplish over the past year. So I want to thank Adam uh, for uh, putting my name in and allowing that to happen. Um, as we look forward to 2019, there are some exciting things in store. The ultimate goal is working partnerships between business community, the Board of Ed, which I can't say enough about, Chesapeake College, and Dave Harper, you're here representing college, so thank you for all that you've done. Um, and focusing on giving students an opportunity <coughs> career without higher education. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, I know there's somebody in the, in the audience today that has stepped to the plate and has uh, written a check to offer a trade and is actually giving someone free education for one person in that trade. So thank you for that. Uh, it's just a great opportunity uh, for our, our young adults. First you will hear from Adam Tolley, and Adam and, and Jack and I have been attached at the hips for the past year. Um, and that's really what it takes to make things happen. So Adam um, is gonna get up, he's the supervisor of the CTE from the Board of Ed, and he'll give an overview of what we've done um, from the education perspective. But before I do that, I just wanna recognize a couple people, because it couldn't happen without these people. I'd like to thank Buck Duncan and Kathy Diotis for their vision in um, supporting our first tour that we did. Uh, the tours that we did, as you can imagine, cost dollars, and none of those dollars came out of our budget, which was awesome. Uh, so thank you. Uh, Buck is actually with Mitchell Community Foundation. So Buck, I can't thank you enough because your, your, your dollars have really helped us create what we've done, so thank you. And Susan O'Neill, she's not here, I don't think. Um, she did RSVP. She's with the Upper Shore Regional Council, and I'd also like to publicly thank them because they've also been a great partner. They actually also financially um, funded our tours, and that could not have happened with these partners. Um, so thank you, and thank you, Buck, for all that you do and all that you've done to help us move this to the next level. So at this time, I'd like to invite Adam. Uh, to come forward and he's going to talk uh, briefly about uh, some of the things that we've done. Also, once we're finished, we will, we will take, the three of us will take some questions, um, if you have any. Um, and Adam? Thank you. Good morning. Um, thank you for inviting me out this morning and giving me the opportunity to talk about some of the initiatives that we have uh, undertaken in the past year and a half. So just to start, my name is Adam Tolley. I am the Supervisor of Career and Technology Education and Social Studies for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. This is my uh, second year on the job here, 17 years uh, in the field of education, and I can honestly say that the past year and a half here has been uh, the most exciting so far. Um, so I just, again, I want to thank Linda for inviting me, um, and I'll, I'll <laughs> start off by sharing how, how we kind of met. Uh, the first week I started in, in August, and it was probably the first week that Linda reached out to me and wanted to meet and talk about Queen Anne's County and the relationship between the county and um, the public school system. So we met and probably sat and talked for an hour and a half, I bet, and just had a very good conversation, again, about the, the county, and I had a lot of questions, um, you know, not being from here, I'm from Dorchester County. Uh, just had a lot of questions about Queen Anne's and the businesses and the relationship. Um, and so really, you know, out of that conversation, there, there was several things, but I think the main overarching theme and overarching um, goal and mission that came out of the conversation was to strengthen the partnership between the business community, the education community, and really connect some, connect some dots that, that hadn't been connected. So, what we really talked about and, and what our goal was is, you know, sometimes you can get overwhelmed and you have so many things that, that want to, you know, we, we want to work on and want to get done, but we wanted to focus on one thing at a time. Um, and so out of that conversation, we decided um, that we wanted to expose our educators, expose our counselors to what is going on in, in the community. And, and part of that was, was selfish for my end because I wanted to see 
the businesses in the community and how we could make that connection. And so Linda arranged uh, for us to tour three businesses um, with, with the county and she, you mentioned the funding that, that took place and there was two buses um, that were secured. And in the end, we had over 80 people that, that did this tour and, and the educators, the, the teachers that I oversee, uh, the counselors, we had board members, elected officials. Um, it was extremely eye-opening. And you know, we, we did, I did a, put a survey out at the end of this tour and the, the results of the survey were overwhelming. You know, the, the teachers were so appreciative to get out and see um, you know, what is available out here. And these are teachers, a lot of teachers that have lived here all their lives and had no idea the businesses that are out there, the opportunities. The educators are our first, our first line for our students. The students see them all week long. They see them seven and a half hours a day. So if our educators don't know what is out there, then it's going to be tough for our students to know. So that was that was our first uh, first job in that tour. Again, very successful. When we got done the tour in the afternoon, we had a roundtable discussion, and and educators, the, the teachers were very open and honest, and and we we really accomplished a lot through that tour. Um, and that was a year ago, that was January of 2018. Um, as Linda mentioned, there have been several tours since then, two tours involving just students. Two buses have gone out to businesses, to go going out to Chesapeake College, with students that were identified that, that you know, want to get out and see what is available to them. So again, it, it really is that exposure piece to get them exposed to what's out here, because it, when, if they don't know, they don't know. Parents don't know, students don't know, so that, that is one of our main missions is to get that exposure out there. Uh, next, well, next month, I say next month, in a couple of weeks, in February, um, Linda has been working on another tour for our teachers. We're gonna go out and, and tour the, uh, I guess we'll call it the public safety sector. We're gonna tour the Sheriff's Department and uh, 911 Center, the, the Maryland Fire Rescue Institute, the Upper Shore Regional Training Center, just to get our, again, just to get our teachers exposed to, to what's out there. And, and we just really feel that that is, um, that is extremely important. So we're really looking forward, um, really looking forward to that. Uh, and again, it's, a, it's an ongoing mission. So it just doesn't stop with the tours. It doesn't stop, you know, we are, are constantly trying to make connections with, with the businesses, with the teachers. And we have, we have really, I think in the past uh, year and a half, made some great strides um, and we're, we're continuing to do that. It's, it is an ongoing process. It's, it's, not an easy, um, it's not an easy lift, it's a heavy lift, uh, but it is extremely rewarding and I really just, you know, I really think that we're starting to see, um, you know, some of the benefits there. Um, one of the other things that I really want to talk about um, is an opportunity that was kind of created, I guess about two years ago, a year and a half ago, it's called the Apprenticeship Maryland Program. Um, and this, this program was a pilot program created between Maryland State Department of Education and the LLR, Department of Labor. Um, and basically the, the program is a, a targeted program for students who are 16 years old and above. Typical apprenticeships are, are for students or for uh, adults 18 and above. Um, the state has recognized that there is a need to, to get exposure for our students. So this, this apprenticeship program gives an opportunity for students that are 16 uh, and above to actually go out and work, get experience, get paid while they are in school, and get their graduation requirements completed. So, so basically you could have a 16-year-old who is identified a junior, um, even, even you know, junior or senior, um, they can get connected with a business that is um, relevant to their liking. They can go out and work during school. 450 hours is, is the requirement that they work. They get a credit of education and three credits of, of workforce experience. And then they can, they can graduate with that experience. But it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful program. This, this program was piloted in Washington and Frederick counties. And when they started out, I think they, they ran, and they were the large counties, just uh, 10 to 12 students through, and their program has grown um, significantly since then. So when this was introduced, we, we you know, kind of perked up a little bit. Um, Linda had the um, uh, host of Maryland State Department of Education, Washington County, they came down, we had a round table discussion, and from then on, we, we have been um, really adamant that we wanted to jump on to this, to this program. So we were approved for this program. We submitted the paperwork, the school board um, submitted the paperwork. We have been approved um, since then. Several businesses in Queen Anne's County have been approved. And to date, um, we have the most 
businesses approved on the Eastern Shore in Queen Anne's County. So we are really, um, really making the time. And, and this comes out of the, you know, the conversation for, for many, many, many years that, um, a national conversation that college is for every student, every student needs to go to college, and, and that conversation really is turning around, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a great turnaround because we know that not every student is, is made for college, um, and that, that there are so many wonderful opportunities out there for our students, and, and again, you know, we are, we are sending that message out. We want to do what's best for each student individually and not try to push them all into to one pathway. And again, these opportunities that are out there, we, we just want to expose our students, and this apprenticeship program is, is a wonderful opportunity. Our plan is to start in the fall um, uh, for the school year fall. We already have um, one business that has um, basically accepted two kids. We have uh, a couple other businesses that have signed on and they are ready to accept students as, as we go. We really think that this program is going to um, take off once, once parents hear about it, once students hear about it, and it's just a, just a wonderful opportunity for students to get out and, and experience um, something uh, in a career field that they like and just you know be able to make money and, and go to school at the same time just a, just a wonderful opportunity so we we're really excited about that um, partnerships you know that has been I think kind of the theme this morning that we talked about and again we want to continue this partnership that we have we want to grow this partnership and, and it's not just partnerships with um, the Chamber of Commerce but it's partnerships with Chesapeake College I've been working with uh, Dave Harper we meet at least once a month, probably if, if uh, not two or three times a month. Um, partnerships with other businesses, several businesses, I mean, too, too, too many for me to name, but it, again, it's just wonderful opportunity and, and it's, it's for, you know, it's for our students. So it's, it's a chance for us to, um, you know, better our students, better our businesses, and just, just have this wonderful collaboration that exists. So. Um, Again, I just want to, I want to thank Linda for all she's done in the Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank the, um, the community of Queen Anne's County for welcoming, uh, welcoming me in, and it's just been, just been a great experience. I look forward to um, the future. I really do, what we've, what we've accomplished so far, and um, I look forward to what we are going to accomplish and really be. Honestly, we're, we, uh, we are going to be the leaders on the Eastern Shore, and, and the state um, has been looking at what we've been doing, and I think we're going to make a a very good uh, footprint in the state as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, just real quick, I wanted to share uh, one of the things that, that was lacking, and I probably everyone here that has employees is aware of it, are the essential skills, soft skills. We used to call them soft skills. Well, now uh, they're called essential skills. And I want to thank Dave Harper and his team at Chesapeake College because they've actually created a program for essential skills. So if you've got an employee that you think could use that service, I would reach out to Chesapeake College and see, uh, sign them up. It's not a credit, but it's also it's a uh, certificate. So they would receive a certificate upon completion. So those are some things. We are listening and hearing what you're saying. We just, it does take a little bit of time. So uh, just keep those comments and uh, coming forward and we'll continue to work. So this time, I have the great pleasure of introducing one of our county commissioners, uh, Commissioner Jack Wilson. Jack has really uh, been the driver next to Adam and myself in moving this to the next level. Uh, so he's, he's got the ear of our legislators and he's got some exciting things to share on where we're gonna go from here. Exciting it could be at 8:30 in the morning. But um, real quick, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time. I can spend a lot of time talking about this. This is a subject I'm very passionate about. Anybody that's known me for the last three and a half years as a commissioner knows it's something from day one that I have pushed and advocated for, and I will not stop until we cross the finish line on this. So, um, but what I want to try to do to keep it short is I want to kind of frame where we were and where we've been for the last 25 years in terms of workforce development and where we, we need to go, and, and with, without haste. So basically the reason we are where we are, sitting in this room, because workforce development obviously affects everybody. And real quick, I just wanna ask, how many, how many business owners in here hired people last year? Okay, and then how many are looking to hire in the coming year? Good luck. 
And, that, and, and sad that I have to say that, but that is the truth. It, the, the workforce is so diminished right now, and it's not just Queen Anne's County, it's not just the Eastern Shore, it's the whole entire country. And I think one of the problems is, going back to where I was, 25 years ago we made a conscious decision, actually probably earlier than that, probably the mid-80s, we made a conscious decision that we were going to steer kids in high school to college, and college only. If you didn't go to college, you couldn't be successful. So basically, we took 30 years and we pushed kids into college. And there's nothing wrong with college, but it's not for everybody. And it's not an end-all, be-all for everybody's career. So in that time frame, what we did is we kind of turned our back, much as we do in this country on a lot of things. We swing the pendulum one way or the other way. We never quite find that homeostasis in the middle that really is where we need to be. So unfortunately, here we are in 2018. And just to give you a background, I started in an apprenticeship in 1984. Back then, we were doing what we're trying to do today. So 35 years ago, we were where we're trying to get to today. And that doesn't make any sense in terms of how we are as, as, a, as a country, that we would actually go backwards to try to go forward. But anyway, so here we are today. We've neglected CTE in high school. We used to call it Botech, but that was a nasty word. Nobody liked that word. So we had to scrap that word because parents thought, oh my god, my, my kid's going to be a grease monkey at the local garage. That's not going to work for me. Unfortunately, where we are today is we have a bunch of specialty trades. And I just want to recognize Rob Mars. That's who Linda was speaking to. Rob is actually taking his business to the next level. He is sponsoring a apprentice student at Chesapeake College. He's reached out. Rob, thank you for all you're doing. You hit the ground running the last time. But it's specialties like Rob has that have gone under the radar for years. Small engine mechanic. Who think that you can make $100,000 working on them little engines on the back of the boats? But it's there. It's a need. And need always drives where we should be going with our workforce. And right now, I, and I said this when I was running the first time, and unfortunately it's getting older and so am I, but when I ran in 2014, the average age of a skilled tradesman was 49 years old, which is exactly where I was at the time. Unfortunately today it's 55. Do the math, that was only three and a half years ago, but we've gone up six years, which means we've lost more through attrition. So we go from 55 back to 18. That's three generations. We have a three generation vacuum in the skilled trades. So how do we fix that overnight? We don't, it's impossible. We're gonna suffer for the next 10 years until we correct the wrong we've done for the last 25 years. Because it's gonna take that long to cycle back to where we get that pendulum back in the center and we have people to take these jobs. And it's expanded now. It's not just the trades. It used to be just the carpenters, electricians, plumbers, but now it's a lot of it. It's, you hear about nurses, nursing shortages. You hear about uh, uh, engine repair shortages all over the spectrum now. There's jobs there, but nobody to fill them. So we've got to concentrate. And I want to thank Adam Tolley especially, because since he's come on board for the last, I've been doing this for three and a half. Adam's been here for about 18 months working on it, and we've probably made more strides in those 18 months than we had in the three and a half years. So, Adam, thank you for all you're doing. <laughs> then everything you're doing is the same So where do we need to go from here? Well, a month ago, I guess it was, we took a visit out to Washington County. Washington County probably has one of the premier programs. I would put it up against any in the country. Their school system back in 1972 saw the need, and they filled the need. They built the regional tech center out there which serves eight high schools in the area, in the county. In that tech center, they started out with the core trades, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and carpentry. In, what I guess, 40 some years that they've been out there now, now they have 17 programs, over 750 students involved. So we had the opportunity to take this tour, and I will tell you, you took any, I would recommend anybody, and they will take anybody on a tour, so any of you have a free day, go out there and take the tour, you will be overly impressed. I walked into this school not knowing what I was going to say, because I've been in the average high school, I've seen how high schools operate. We walked into this high school, these, these kids were engaged, respectful, they had no problem speaking to adults, they were excited to tell us about what they were doing, all because it was something they were looking forward to. They don't have that stress going to that high school of where am I going to be when I turn 18 and graduate. They know they've got a job. Every single one of them students has a job the day they leave high school. And I'm not talking about small end careers. They have a Department of Homeland Security uh, division that's placing every kid in a job they can start out at $55,000, $60,000 a year. And that's impressive when you think about it. 780 kids, that's 10% of our existing school population. If we could do that here in just Queen Anne's County, imagine the students we're turning out. Nothing against what we do now, 
But the problem is, we get our kids out at what's, help me out here board, 98, 99% graduation rate? But do we know where they're at five years from now, 10 years from now? No, we don't have any measurables to know. But if we send them kids out with skills, we don't have to worry about that 10%. We know they're gonna be good. So we really need to concentrate on getting there. So how do we get there? Well, we're already working on it. We've met with Delegate Greist here. He sits on a very powerful committee over there and that has money, which you need money to do all this stuff. So we've looked at commandeering some of that money to build a regional tech center at Chesapeake College. The college is well aware of what we're working on and hopefully in three years that will be a reality. But in the meantime, what we're gonna do is I've uh, already talked to my fellow commissioners and we're gonna work on it, but we want to push to get the existing manufacturing and trades building that is at the college now, up and running by the 2020 school year to start some of these programs. Because it's, a, it's very low hanging fruit and we can affect a lot of kids now. And I think that's the goal of this is, we wanna make sure that we have opportunities for our kids, not only to go to college, but to have a career in whatever they enjoy doing. Because how many people have heard us saying, if you don't like what you do every day when you get up and go to work, you're not gonna be very good at it. And that's, that's so true. I mean, I've been an electrician slash steam fitter, jack of all trades for 35 years, and I love getting out of bed every day. So, and uh, I don't make a million dollars a year, but I have fun doing what I'm doing. Whatever, whatever. What else did you want me to talk about? Later? <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so one of the one of the hurdles we had, I'm glad you brought that up. One of the hurdles we had was, <clears throat> obviously we're, 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 we're playing with a three-legged stool here. Everybody knows how they are, you lose one leg, it's real wobbly. So we have, we have the school board, we have our local educators that we're dealing with, they're one leg. We have our local governments is the other leg. And then we have our business community, which are the people in need, right? So all three of them have to work together, and the college obviously is under the education wing. So maybe it's a three and a half leg stool. But at the end of the day, they all, everything's got to be working for this whole plan to come together. And that's been the biggest hurdle is getting to that point, is getting our educators. Uh, Dr. King, when she first came on, I met with her the very first week she was in office, had come into the job, and I was probably a pain in her, you know what, when I came in, but it, it got her on board, she's on board. We had Dr. Coppersmith there with the college, when he came on board, same deal, we got them on board. And we've had the business community on board for the last three years. It hasn't been an issue going out to the business to say, hey, do you guys want to step up and help us if we get this going? <laughs> Not an issue. So we're, we're there now. We have all the pieces in place. So this past summer, when we were looking at the Upper Shore Regional Council, has the money to spend, and it typically has to go towards economic development uh, stuff between Kent, Queen Anne, and Cecil County. So one of the things I brought up and I was thinking about was, we need somebody who's a third party, who doesn't work for the government, doesn't work for the schools, and doesn't work for the businesses, but somebody who can facilitate looking at all three and make sure that what's going on in this program is working so that nobody has a tie to them, so nobody's gonna feel obligated to tell them, oh, you know what, this, this part's working, but you guys aren't pulling your weight. So we put money aside, we have money aside for that person. So within the next year, we will be hiring what I call now facilitator, navigator, whatever, to be that person, to work for Queen Anne's County and the region, to reach out to the business community, to reach out to our board of ed, to reach out to the college, and make sure we're using, doing the right programs, we have the right people in place, we have the right dollars to do what we need to do, and be as efficient as we can. That being said, we hit another hurdle when that came about. And of course, Adam probably had to drop that bomb on me. Unfortunately, the state of Maryland, MSDE, won't accept that initially. So we lobbied them. We said, why not? You guys require somebody to look at your CTE programs and take care of them. We're going to provide somebody that you don't have to pay that's a third party. They love the idea. Much as Adam said, we're setting standards that the rest of the state are going to follow. So we will be hiring a facilitator, and you will see him or her at meetings and around and be reaching out to the businesses to make sure what the, what are the businesses needs, um, what are the education size needs and everything else. So I think that's gonna be a great asset that will be coming on in 2019 to set up what hopefully in 2020 will be the rollout of three or four core programs over at the college to uh, start facilitating the long-term goal of putting in a full-blown regional tech center with upwards of 15 programs. And just to give you an idea real quick, we'll wrap up. The 17 programs that Washington County's up to now include <coughs> biomedical, they include electrical, auto mechanics, auto body, carpentry, 
computer and gaming design, um, nursing, basic nursing. No, no plumbing. Believe it or not, I'm very surprised. Plumbing and HVAC were not there. They started out with them, but they had gotten rid of them because the uh, third-party apprenticeships had pretty much gobbled up most of the kids, which is fine because that's always a leg to go on. But I, oh, that's right. And the one they recently added, which was fantastic, is they added a public service uh, something they called it public service, but it it, it had criminal justice where kids could go in and learn uh, both either the legal side and or actually becoming a police officer or, or MP in the military is another one they put. <coughs> Department of Homeland Security direct hiring, which I already mentioned earlier. You actually go in and that's, that's what you do. You do cybersecurity, you get certified on some of the newest uh, technology and all that stuff. And then they had a full blown firefighters, which kind of patterns after our MIFRI here, which is the academy that they're going to tour, but the difference is when those kids get out of there, they have a full firefighter one, full firefighter two, and they're fully trained EMTs, which means they can go to work tomorrow as paid firefighters. Not to mention the requirement is they have to work for a local volunteer fire department while they're in school, which helps all of our volunteer fire departments out because that's an immediate influx of personnel. So in closing, listen, we're gonna, it's gonna be an all hands on deck uh, process. Everybody, if you're asked to do something, please, Take the time and do it because it's only going to make Queen Anne's County better. It'll make all of our businesses stronger when we have the people to fill the jobs. So, thank you all. Does anyone have any questions for Jack or Adam or myself? I have, I have um, not a question as much as it just a comment and a concern for Adam. Um, a lot of the, 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 the direction that our high school students are taking as they get into their junior and senior years is the guidance from the guidance counselor. So just, you know, concern that, you know, that they're buying in on this program and understanding that, again, college isn't for everybody. Um, you know, you equate a lot of this push to college to college to college on those high school student guidance counselors. So if they're on board, that's going to be a key component. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we, we have um, we have presented this to I presented this the apprenticeship program to all the counselors uh, probably a few months ago, and they are on board. They 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 want to make sure is one of the things with the program is that it is their graduation requirement. So in other words, students have a couple pathways that they can take to graduation. One pathway is they have to take two foreign languages. Another pathway is doing a C, completing a CTE pathway. So construction, if they go through carpentry, or that is their pathway. Um, this is, is a pathway. So they would actually go into their maybe midway through their junior year, um, and then they would identify with a business. And the way the program works is that uh, businesses actually interview students. So businesses put out the positions that they have, they interview students, and they actually select the students based on what their needs are in the business. And then the business employs them, they provide, uh, in some cases, the education for the students, and then that becomes their, their pathway. So the, the only concern from on the counselor's perspective is that they want to make sure that where they get placed, they will be as, as successful as possible. Um, so that doesn't jeopardize their graduation progress. So there, there are safeguards that are put in place there as far as you know, students and the, the interaction between the businesses and the Department of Labor and the, the position that Jack mentioned. So we, we want to have this collaboration. So we want to do everything we can to make sure students are successful and provide all the supports necessary. So the guidance, the, the counselors are on board. Um, and we really think, and just like it has in Washington County, that the program will sell itself. Once students are in the businesses and you know, everybody knows that the best advertisement is, especially with teenagers, is from teen to teen. You know, when, when they see that one, one student is successful and they're out working during school and they're learning, you know, learning um, a skill and they're getting paid for it, they have to get paid minimum wage. That is the requirement of the program. Minimum wage, at least minimum wage. So that's, you know, eight, ten dollars an hour that they're getting paid or in, in some cases more, depending on the businesses. Um, and we really think that it's going to spread. We really think the program will advertise itself, and, and especially as, as you know, as a parent out of a, a senior and a freshman in high school, I think it's just a phenomenal opportunity. And, and I would love for, uh, and, and, and again, the, the, the piece that we talk about, we talk about college, and this can involve college. It doesn't just have to be just you're going out to get a job and that's it. Many jobs provide 
provide college education for their students. So it is a, it's an all-encompassing program. So we really think that, that they're going to, to be on board um, and really help promote the program. You're, you're, you're drawing down into the middle schools too. Absolutely, yes. We're, we're going down to the middle schools. We're doing a lot of things um, you know, to begin getting this out to the middle schools. We, we, one thing I didn't mention, we have been having a conversation about doing um, a job fair. Um, in maybe not in the traditional sense of a job fair, not a job fair. Um, uh, career day. Career community day. Just, just again, to raise that awareness. And, and so the, the more that, again, it just goes back to that, that awareness piece, and the more that they're aware of the opportunities, the more I think that they're going to take advantage of it. And, and I mentioned, you know, Washington County, uh, their population is about 150,000 people in the county. Much larger, um, obviously, than our county, 24,000 students. We have about 8,000. But they started out small. I mean, they started out with, with 10 students, and now they, they've at least doubled that probably more because, because the program is in businesses. I've heard about it. More businesses there have jumped on, and, and it's, it's a wide array of businesses. They've had um, uh, health care. They've had Aspen Tree Company. They've had engineering, architecture. Any type of business that's there can participate in this program. Military, so. military, absolutely. I mean, it, the, the possibilities are endless. It's just a matter of you know us getting it out and, and educating everybody about it and, and you know, letting them know about the opportunities. But the counselors are they are a huge piece. They have been on board. Um, the the uh, supervisor of counselors is on board with this. So we are we are making making this all encompassing. Hey, um, is this going to replace the work study program? Because our company has been hiring work study high school students for 10 plus years sure. and we pay them you know, sure. more than the minimum wage. Is that going to eliminate that? Because we have them all year long. Right. It doesn't, no, it doesn't, it will not eliminate it. It doesn't have to eliminate it. But this just, just provides this extra opportunity, you know, and, and, and again with this apprenticeship program, the goal is for them really to be more connected. In some, in some cases and not all cases, we, we have students who are in placements that really don't fit their needs. And with this apprenticeship program, it really, it really drills down to students and their needs and the business needs and their, what, what they are looking for. So it kind of it kind of takes out a layer of uncertainty there, uh -huh. you know. So they are really focused on what they want to do. You know, in some cases uh, in Washington County, they had ten students apply for a position, and the business may take just one of those students. And the businesses do that interview process. So you really are getting a student who is is um, interested in that whatever that is in that field. But it doesn't doesn't have to replace it, but it, it really just kind of opens up that opportunity a little bit more. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure hiring high school students. That's great. An absolute pleasure. They're like, their brains are little sponges. My goodness. <laughs> we, we have, I mean, our, so our students are wonderful. It's so much fun to watch them grow. Absolutely. It's, it's exciting. Yeah. Their students are wonderful. It's just, it, it's just our job to make that to make that connection a little bit better. And then when you make that connection better, it's a better experience for the student, better experience for the business, better experience for everybody. So that's what our goal is. If you're interested in the apprenticeship program, you can visit the Dollar website, Department of Labor License Regulation, and it's called Youth Apprenticeship. It's a very simple application to complete. So if you're interested in being a part of that, um, just go to that website, visit that website, um, or you can reach out to the chamber or one of us, and we can be more than happy to help you. Yes, ma'am. Oh. One question, um, is the area of hospitality and agriculture included in your planning? Actually, uh, actually, uh, we really love the Washington County model um, because first off, why reinvent the wheel? They've been doing it well for 40 some years and culinary is actually one of their, and one of the things I forgot to touch on about Washington County was, that I thought was very impressive, their culinary school in there feeds all the students every day. Oh. They don't have cafeteria staff. The students in the school clean the school. They do the bathrooms, the floors. There are no janitorial. They are responsible for keeping that school uh, clean, and they are inspected uh, every two or three weeks on the cleanliness of the school. Um, but yes, so the culinary agriculture is already in place and will only expand and become part of it for the region, because this will be a regional thing. Uh, Queen Anne's County alone, student population couldn't support this on its own. Um, so this will be a collaboration between Queen Anne's, Talbot, Caroline, uh, Kent, and Dorchester. Dorchester. Uh, maybe less Dorchester because they do have a school down there, but, but we're, we're actually offering it up to them. But at the end of the day, 
that gives us the population base that kind of matches what Washington County has as a larger county. And, and, the, and the high school base, that gives us eight, nine high schools to work with. So we should be able to get the student population to keep the program going. Because that's one of the things that's happened to CTE over the years, is when times get tight and the school's budget, the school systems have to make tough decisions, um, two of the things that they cut, almost like clockwork, is maintenance on the buildings, which is an easy cut because you can maybe slide for three or four years. And the CTE programs <laughs> have been a victim of that over the last 25 years. So um, this time we want to make it so it's kind of bulletproof and that once we get it going, it'll become perpetual and, and, and won't be an issue anymore. But yeah, we're, and we're open to new programs. If anybody has a program, if any business, that's one of the things we're going to do is do business surveys. Is there programs we're missing? Are there things that looking at the future that maybe we should be embracing now to have the workforce for the future? So, um, can you tell me the essential skills course at Chesapeake? Can you just give me a brief summary? Um, what? Dave, do you want to speak on that? Because Dave created it. So, so it's already prepackaged. It was developed in Anne Arundel County uh, in partnership with their chamber, and it's called the Workforce Workplace Excellence Series. And it has 10 capacities, they all end in ability. So things like communication ability, presentability, things like adaptability. So basically the skills that we find we need most in the workforce that may not all, that may, maybe historically were taught in families, in churches, in community organizations, in scouts, things like that. Uh, these are the skill sets that uh, we can help develop and we can help develop managers to reinforce them. So we can train the employees directly, and we can also train, train their managers to reinforce those skills and inculcate them in the workforce so that it's an ongoing uh, development. So uh, we, we can offer that on site to a business. We can have uh, students come to Chesapeake College. We can also wrap it into some of our programs that are forward facing, things like CNA and GNA, uh, so that you, or in hospitality. And those are the ways we're looking at making sure that someone who comes from Chesapeake College and who has participated in the Workplace Excellence Series uh, is someone who can uh, interact well, communicate well, someone who has a strong work ethic, and someone who's going to really be an asset to any organization. So one of the things that we're, we're trying to, like Dave uh, mentioned, is, is make sure that our CTE students get that training too. So it's, we've kind of worked and we're also working on a financial literacy part of that too. So we're kind of bringing it all together but there's just a, you know, a lot and there's just a few of us as, as you know um, that are working on it. So it's, um, it's all good stuff. But anybody else have any questions? Yeah? Thank you. The, 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 uh, they do have a, an extensive, one of the programs out there is an extensive computer program which, which deals with a lot of different areas of uh, computer literacy things. And I believe AI was one of the uh, programs that was within that. So yeah, the, the, the computer side was, there was quite a bit to it. So, um, And real quick, I want to add something, and strictly from a political nature, uh, sadly. But um, for, for, no, not personal, but um, so anybody that's been watching the news or has watched the news over the last year and a half, you may have heard a uh, catchphrase called the Kerwin Commission. Um, and sadly, that, that, that whole process got kicked down the, the, the road for another year. Um, but one of the things, glaring things in the Kerwin Commission recommendations, and this is where the political side comes in, because I would like everybody here to reach out to their delegates and senators and any that they may know outside of our county, and express to them that, that we would like to see part of the Kerwin, Kerwin Commission recommendations deal with CTE. All of them $4.6 billion that they're talking about adding to education and not one dime was thought about to put to workforce development, which I think is a very, very horrible way of looking at our future. So anybody, when you get in, and, and Senator Hershey and, and Delegate Aarons might be dead ears to talk to because I think I've worn out both of those. So, but anybody that knows any other senators or delegates throughout the state, especially some of the Democratic ones, and again, I hate to make it political, but it, it really is. And get in their ear. We have a lot. We have 65 new delegates and senators down there, and they're going to be very impressionable. And 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 I think we need to reiterate, you know, that Queen Anne's County and the rest of the state should really be looking at, at the future of, of our workforce development. And Kerwin Commission is going to shape a lot of that from the education side, so um, just Perfect. wanted to put that out there. Uh, just a reminder real quick, don't forget your directory on the way out. They just came off the press, so we have tons of them. We 
would like to get rid of those. Um, we don't want to take any back to the office, so please, if you need a case for your office or your business, please don't hesitate. Um, well, thanks again, Adam Colley, Jack Wilson, Linda Friday, Tracy Wilson. Um, thanks for everybody in attendance. Um, we uh, are to the point where we draw our 50-50, so. Um, <coughs> okay, the lucky winner is, this is a bit faded, but I think we can make it out. The lucky winner is 848. Six, eight, two.